and some of that. But anybody who ever rode a pet motorcycle was never paid to ride a pet motorcycle. They were always amateurs, and we always supported them. We were always been in the amateur end. We've never really gotten a professional end of, of the sport. We love the enduros, and we love the air scrambles and the motocross, and, and we love the amateur end. And uh, we still do, and uh, we always love the pet family on that on that ground, not on a professional ground. Through all this, Bob Hanna became a very personal friend of mine, and he he actually kept developing these these <laughs> I can give it away now these boots, and one of the things was he had weak ankles, so that's one and. So the, a lot of the thing was developed around the fact that it would protect his ankles and so forth. And once in a while I'd slip him a, a I don't know, a few bucks one way or another. But things got going pretty good in a couple of years that I never, he was a real personal friend. He still is. He calls me up all this time and bothers me. But at any rate, I said, okay, we'll straighten this all out. So I gave him 50 cougar eggs. <laughs> and it wasn't, it wasn't very far after that that the cougar eggs went like this, and, you know, <laughs> and the whole thing fell apart. And, and to this day, and I keep telling him, you, you hang on to those cougar eggs. <laughs> and he's, he's still hanging on to the cougar eggs. Now the cougar eggs did go down to about three bucks. But now they're up just about to six, six, six bucks, five, five seventy-five or something. And, and of course, he naturally called me up and and said, "Hey, you got to be down down to to uh, uh, Indianapolis because we're in this off-road thing." And, you know what's the name of that? Uh, Blue, Ribbon. Blue Ribbon. Yeah, the Blue Ribbon. Cur yeah, and the Malcolm Smith and. And uh, him and I and all these people are in this blue ribbon, and we have an auction down there and a big thing, and the industry's in it now because it's big. But they they make a big joke on it, but all of us get us up in front and so forth. But they're and that, and I'm gonna hit him up again. Hang on to those cooler rings. <laughs> If I never knew 
what it could be like just to get the chance to stand so close to you all of you even for a little while I know it'll be enough to go and get me through So hard to choose But when you've got nothing Where do you go? What do you do?
Bob is Mr. Kent's legitimate son, and uh, they don't let that out too often, except <laughs> at places like this. So, no, no, he, he's uh, they're they're the fastest of friends. The seventh, no, it's the ninth annual Blue Ribbon Coalition Breakfast of Champions. And boy, do we have a program for you folks! An incredible collection of stars, off road and on road, here for the purpose of dedicating and raising funds to maintain land use and open territory for us to continue to ride our off-highway vehicles in this great land, the U.S. When we first started this breakfast, Don Amador was telling me from the Blue Ribbon Coalition nine years ago, we had to twist arms to get 20 people to get up this early on Sunday. Now as I look out and see 350 people eating breakfast, something's changed. And I'm proud to say that Business, the business in this industry has changed. The awareness levels and the importance of land use has changed. And your dedication to it has changed. It's exciting as hell to me to see that we do have a future and that the younger generations will be able to grow up riding off highway vehicles, riding trails, riding flat track, riding cross country. Americans are now even starting to ride better overseas. We've got champions from Paris to Car with us today. We've got national, grand, grand national flat track champions today. We've got Bonneville Salt Flats champions with us today. Supercross, motocross champions today. Of all generations, all ages, this truly is a breakfast of champions. With that, I've got to interview, or I've got to introduce our, our next uh, guest who for over 20 years in broadcasting in the motorcycle and power sports industry has entertained us, has informed us, has, has really solidified the entire sport of Supercross in my mind, because his name is absolutely synonymous with it. I've seen him on television when I was uh, racing myself. I've seen, heard him on the radio, and we're so proud to have him with us today. Uh, would all of you join me in giving a big round of applause for our guest, Mr. Larry Myers. Thank you very much. I want you to know that Supercross was a way to make a living. It was never my, uh, let's see, what would you call it? I like dirt track a lot better. I like trail riding a lot better, and Enduros, and now GMCC. Supercross is way the hell down the list. Not that, not that there's anything wrong with it. Yeah, wait, well, you just shut the hell up. We'll hear from you later. You, you know, I taught you a long time ago, Hannah, that you never want to mess with the guy with the microphone. Never, not ever, because you're going to lose. We, no, I'll give him that microphone. The reason Malcolm who broke his hip last Sunday and he was operated on on Monday, the reason he got on an airplane and came out here was because he wasn't going to miss a free meal. Is <laughs> that true? Absolutely true. Want me to serve you breakfast? Uh, sure. <laughs> All right, okay. We'll hear from Malcolm in detail in, in just a little bit. Malcolm, we're so happy that uh, you were able to hobble on down here and join us. I'm glad, glad you got through airplane security. Uh, Larry will tell you what he wants to do. I, hell, I don't know. You know, I think it's a good idea. Maybe we start to, to uh, interview a, a, a guy or two. In fact, let me bring my uh, old buddy up here, John Penton. And uh, just have John say a few words. John, 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 John you got to get out of your chair. Let's go, baby. John is a, uh, he, he generally doesn't mind my saying this, because he knows it's true. I worked for this man for uh, 13 years, and I can say things about him that you can't, because I worked for him for 13 years. One of the problems we have when I give John the microphone, is why I'm reluctant to hand it to him, let him take over, is he doesn't like to give it back. 
He starts talking about one thing, and then he talks about another, and you just never know which way he's going to go. But it's always interesting, and John was very instrumental in off-road riding in this country through his uh, efforts at riding enduros, and uh, he's responsible, no question about it, for the lightweight movement that took place when he brought that Penton 125 over a good number of years ago. So meet John Penton, if you will.
and starts and rides another six day. Another of the six days, and unfortunately, by the time he finished that day, his knee was all torn up because the stitches all were gone. Went back to the hospital, and the doctor was quite surprised, wasn't he? Yeah, he was really surprised and disappointed. He said, he said I, I really didn't think I had to tell you that you weren't going to ride a motorcycle for a few weeks until that knee healed. Here he goes again. You aren't going to believe this, and my wife was watching this. That doctor stitched me up with a cigarette dangled in his this, this is a, yeah, it's on the Grino, and that was, this is the absolute truth. And after that, I went to the motocross up in Austria the next week, and by that time, my knee was well infected and swollen up. But that, that's, that was very significant, and my wife had a fit about it. So every morning, what John learned from that is every morning, in order to feel good and to function during the day, he gets up. And if nothing happens to him by 8 o'clock, he takes his hand and he lays it down on a rock. And he picks up another rock and he smashes his hand. Now he can get through the day with a little bit of pain and that. Thank you, John. Complete with a display case. Roger DeCoster, five-time world champion. And you know there's some autograph writing on here. Well, we're standing right next to you. you want, can you read that with your glasses? Uh, just right over there to have a man who uh, he autographed it to. Hannah, would you come here a second? We want you to read the inscription. Do you know what it says without reading it? Sure. I think Roger got lucky on some of those world champions. <laughs> but anyway, they gave him five. What the heck? It's uh, Roger signed it to me about uh, 15 and oh no. 25 years ago, <laughs> it was a long time. And uh, it says to uh, Bob, the toughest competitor I ever met. I don't know if he's telling the truth or not, but that's what it says. I'll tell you, they had some epic, epic battles, no question about it. The toughest man he ever met. That's in fact what it says. After he started talking to you? <laughs> Five years he never talked to me. I rammed him too many times. <laughs> How long did it take him to finally beat the guy? Until he got old, and I didn't wait around until he got old. <laughs> if you like racing with John Penn, you're going to have to wait a while, you know? There you go. We're going to auction that off. You're going to do that now? You no, know, that's authentic. But I, got, I need a little help, Bob, on figuring out where to have to start this live auction on, on this incredible piece. But maybe Tom White will jump in and do that for me. Thousand bucks. Thousand bucks right there. <laughs> I didn't have to open my mouth. That's one grand. Carter, thousand bucks. What? Two grand right there. All right, we got a little battle going here. Three thousand from Tom White. No, uh, Mr. Carter. Thirty-five hundred bucks. How about four? How about four? We're at thirty-five. We're at thirty-five. Thirty-five. We got four grand from Tom White. Any hands over on this side? We got four grand from Tom White. So last thousand bucks. Been aware of this? Four thousand. This is gonna look real nice with your collection of those old bikes. You got any bikes that Roger rode himself, Tom? You know, you're going to have the hat. <laughs> you're too cheap? <laughs> too cheap, that's right. Well, you're bidding, you're up to four grand on this hat. Or was it five? <laughs> oh, four, I forgot, I almost forgot. Chris Carter, you're about... You know, this is just, you gotta touch it. You gotta just read the inscription. Is that authentic or what? Yeah, I handed it last night. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do anything to raise money around here, won't we? All right, we're at four grand with Tom White. How about 45? 45, I see 45, we got 45. Chris is bumping the bank up in the ante. How about five grand, Tom? Five grand. We got 5,000 bucks from Tom White. 5,500? Carter, are you going 55? Carter, are you going 55? 55, 55? How about 5250? 5250, we're at five grand, we're at five. 5250, we got 5250 from Chris. 5250, 55? 5500 bucks? 53. 53 bucks. <laughs> All right, we're splitting hairs now. 53 and 53. We're at 53. 5350 bucks? Just go 50 more. 53, 53, 5300 bucks. 5300 bucks going once to Tom White. 5,300 bucks going twice. Sold, 5,300 dollars. <laughs>
17, 17, we got 17 from Tim. 18, 18, we got 18. Don, are you in the, in the running? We got 19 from Don. Two grand, two grand, we got two. How about 22? 22, what? 2,200 bucks. Come on, baby. Show me the money. 2,200 bucks? We're at 21, 21, how about, how about 21? 21, we're at 21 with you. 22, Don, 22, 2,100 going once, 2,100 going twice. $2,100 sold, thank you very much. All right, thank you. Bob just brought up a, a piece of memorabilia that ought to be worth something here. What is it? Well, it's an autograph, uh, autograph from John Penn. Uh, the first time he ever came here, John always dates everything when he signs. You know that, and he's always telling people, to always date that because somebody's grandson's going to want to know when it was. This was brought here the first time he was ever at the breakfast in the undecided. He signed there and. Today he signed here, today's dates to 1707, and then on this side here is a 22 BC. <laughs> I was supposed to bring it because I wasn't around then, but I was supposed to bring it. What do we get? Can we get something out of it? I'll pay $20. <laughs> John will pay more than that, I'm sure, John. I'll... Yeah, John will pay 50 Malcolm? If, Malcolm, if you don't get in here, Malcolm, we're going to put one of these up for you. <laughs> okay. Well, Malcolm was here that day. <laughs> 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 
Mark and he wants that today to get on. <laughs> Bob, you've been a, a, a longtime supporter of uh, the uh, Blue Ribbon Coalition. Uh, you first came to, I think, the dinner about four years ago, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, have, or the breakfast, rather, and, and have been to everyone ever since. Uh, you're a motocross guy. What, what brings you to this avenue? Well, they keep a lot of trails open in my area, too, so that's how I found out about it first. You really started riding as a trail rider, did you not? It's all I've ever been. They just closed the trail in with a fence. First day I went there, I didn't know what a berm was. <laughs> Somebody said that you hit the berm, and I, I don't think so. Where was it? <laughs> We're talking about Jeff Ward. Yeah. I learned later to use the riders in the berms. <laughs> Who's the toughest guy you've ever raced against? Uh, and forget personalities aside, who do you think was the guy that would give you the most trouble? Bikes are running good, both of you are on a good day. So who would it be? In the first five years, Roger, you know, tenacity, he was, he didn't like getting beaten. I was a smart aleck and, and uh, he put up a heck of a fight. As a matter of fact, I tell him, how about the Unadilla race when uh, you were uh, showing him what Motocross was all about. I was uh, just to make it fast. I was obviously wilder. He was precise and good, and I was wild and wanted to be good. And, and uh, the first time I ever raced Roger was in '76. Uh, he passed me on the last lap of a Trans Am that I'd led the whole way. And when I saw him coming, I actually moved over. I said, "There's no reason to get in this man's way." Right? So I moved over. He wins. Following year, we had some very good battles. The one year, particularly talking about Unadilla, is. Uh, my thoughts, I remember the thoughts of that race. We were both bad starts, first moto, we come through the pack, I catch Roger, he's in about, oh, I, thought, I think he's probably third when I catch him, and uh, I catch him, I think, oh, this is gonna be difficult, but I go by him, and nobody rams into me the next day. And I said, well, this is wild. I go, my thoughts were to make, it, it was a longer thought process, but I said, well, the old man's about had it. That's why my, my exact thought was the old man's about had it. And I thought, I thought it was kind of sad, actually. But then Roger was thinking, Roger didn't really care about the first moto, so I win the first moto, he comes in second. And I'm the dumb one here because he's the one that really has a plan. The next moto, we come up through the back again, we get to the lead. I pass him. I really wasn't thinking much about it, and I suddenly slams me, and he slams me, and I startle me, and I'm thinking, wow. So I, I get in the next corner, you know, and I'm right all the outside lines, and this guy's doing precise turns, right? And I'm outside, outside. And uh, I go by him again, and wow, next corner, wham, he hits me, and I go, man, the old man's not dead yet. <laughs> And uh, we do this for about 20 minutes, it's a 45 minute race, and the sly bugger in one corner where I was rounding it, he's squaring it, kind of sets me up. I think the dirty bugger did it on purpose, I know he did, but he T-bones me off a jump and knocks me down, and uh, and I got to try to catch him to kill him, but I couldn't do this. <laughs> you and Roger both talk about that, and, and rightfully so. It, it's, uh, it was a great moment. I took us 10 years to, get to, to warm up each other. Yeah. Now we hug occasionally. <laughs> Do you and Brock Lover ever hug? Not yet. <laughs> would, was he your, would you say that Brock was your biggest nemesis on the racetrack? I think he my biggest pin in the ass. <laughs> Where's Ken, where Ken Howerton? Right. Yeah, he was sick. Was Brock above Ken? Yeah. Go ahead to live with him seven years, you know, I think he was. No, those guys were good riders too, but Brock and I never really had uh, many battles on the track. Kent and I had a lot of battles. Uh, obviously, he was on a different team. With teammates, we try to behave each other out there. I don't think Brock and I have ever touched on a track or in a motel room or anything else. <laughs> hey, I got a question for Bob. <laughs> this is uh, Michael Peterson. Print, first print autograph by Malcolm Smith or Malcolm on his husky. And I remember hearing you, Bob, say a comment, something about the position of the front wheel on this machine. I thought that Michael just didn't capture the moment there because I've never seen Malcolm with the front wheel in the air. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was fudging a little bit, that's all. All right, what do you start to bidding at, Anna? Uh, 
loves them. Thousand bucks from Bob Hanna himself for this Malcolm Smith print. How about back there, Kenny? Yep. You got a uh, 1500? I'll go 1500. 15. Do I see 1750? 17. Oh, time out. We got 1750. Malcolm? Yeah, you guys need to know something about that picture. That was uh, New England Six Day Trials, the International Six Day Trials, and uh, Burleson and I, Ed Schmidt, and Ronnie Bond were on the Silver Boss team. And that was one of the special tests during the event, and we won the Silver Boss that year. Uh, yeah, and that's, that's what it's from. That's what that is, autographed by Malcolm himself. There's actually 10 more of those over here, Malcolm, but this one's framed and this one's numbered and this one's autographed by you. Okay, what's the bidding at? We're at uh, 1,500 bucks, Gary Gallagher. What did Hannah go for? We're at 1,500. What did Hannah start and his picture go for? Uh, Alex, what'd you pay for that one for uh, Hannah's? Not enough. 2,100. 2,100 bucks. Are you sure? Enough? How about? We're at 1500. How about 16? 1600, we got 16. How about 17? 1700, we got 17. How about 18? 1800, do I see 18? We got 17 over on my left. We got 1800 from Gary Gallagher. 18. How about 19? We got 19 from the AMA. How about 2 grand? 2 grand, do I see 2? 2 grand, round it up, make it an even 2. 2 grand from Gary. How about 21? 21? 21? We got 21. Will you do 22? 22? 22? 22? We got 21 on it? It's got to be more than Hannah. Malcolm's going to pass Hannah. Make it 22 just so you can say it. 2200, 2200. We got 21, 21. 2100, 2100 cash. 21 going over here once. 2100 twice. 2100 sold. Yeah, hey, hey, thank you very much. Thank you very much. What Bob's going for? 21 also. 21 also. <laughs> That's all they tie. Rightfully so. Bob, could you could you start out by telling us how in the world you ever got together with this gentleman right here? Oh well, was with Larry was first working for him. I met Larry Myers, and he wanted to introduce me to the the king of off road. And I said, Yeah, I want to meet him. I want to come there. So Larry told me to come to town as soon as I can, and uh, I come to the old Penton store and. Uh, the old building, I don't know what you call yeah. that old building. Well, was, uh, wasn't it an uh, ice rink or hockey rink or something, <laughs> bowling alley or something? Oh. Yeah, it was an old roller rink. Yeah, roller rink. <laughs> and yeah. Uh, that's where I met him first. Then we started doing business and become friends, and uh, he invited me into his house, and uh, maybe, and even his uh, wife built me a quilt before. <laughs> wow. One of you yeah. guys out of the family to have a quilt, maybe, I think. You're the, you're Bob is the only member out of our family that has a quilt from my wife. And she's quilted at least 40 or 50 quilts by now. So, and, and she's given them to out of her family and the rest of them she all has as a collection. I have no idea what she's going to do with them, but I have to tell you that I met, when, when, I, when uh, Larry introduced me to him, you know, uh, it, it, I took him somehow, I invited him home and he stayed at my home and, uh, and, and, and the most significant thing about this was when he left, uh, my wife said, how did you ever meet him? He's so arrogant, he's so smart, he's just a smarty young guy, you know, and uh, I said, he's okay, but he, he, you know, that's the way he is. And, uh, and it finally turned out, of course, we had a lot of doings together. He, he ro rode my, bo my boots, you know, and, and uh, it, you know, and it didn't cost me much. He, he rode, I didn't have to pay too much contingency or anything else, and, uh, and everything went real well. But uh, it all turned out that uh, today, uh, my wife and family think that he's the greatest guy going. And I don't know, some long line, he shook the, all that smartiness and everything else. He did a real guy. <laughs> now, now, Bob, would you say that you rubbed off on him or he rubbed off on you? Well, let's hope I didn't rub off on him. Okay. He was a gentleman. <laughs> we don't want to bring him down. Did you ever get to go riding with him? 
No, we never no, rode together. We never rode, we never together. rode together. We were always too busy, uh, everything. Yeah, you know, we're always at functions and too busy. And busy, and I was at the end of my ropes about that time, too. You think you could have shown him a few things? No, no I don't. No. <laughs> I couldn't. No. Have. The style was all different. He wasn't used to hit, hitting the trees and so forth, and the rocks, and I was, and, and so forth. So we never rode, to, and, and I never. Uh, only in, in the beginning did I ever, I've never ridden two or three motocrosses myself because I was at, I had come up in motocross and uh, and I was way up close to my, getting close to my 50s by then, see, so. Now Bob, your style uh, with your, your lightning bolt and everything is, is so well known, but those high point boots are as well known as image on you, especially in those early days as, as well as anything. So you certainly did a lot to, uh, uh, you know, promote his, his product there. I, I knew his boots before I even started racing, so they were something I always wanted. It, when I first started racing, I couldn't afford a pair of them. And finally, when I won a few races, I could actually afford a pair of them and ended up buying a couple of pairs before I ever met John. And then uh, later, obviously, got the opportunity to be sponsored by him, which was great. And the great part is he sponsored my father, and until my father was 83 years old, my dad wore his boots every day of his life because he wore them in a daily routine. Uh, he wore the steel plate. He tucked his pants into his boots every day of his life between he was... When my dad was 70 till he was 83, he wore high point boots every day of his life. <laughs> wow. And he told people when he, he rides his motorcycle to the restaurant every day and everybody say, what are those? Because he'd be in places where they didn't know what high point boots were. And he goes, they're snake boots. The snake bites that steel plate, ricochets off. He said, they're snake boots. So my dad wore high point boots more than anybody in the entire world. More days than anybody ever in the entire world. He wore them for 15 years. Bob, the two of you, Mr. Penton and yourself, two such icons of the sport. Most people, I think, they don't realize the connection you two have. To see the two of you together is something really special. The, the, the thing probably John and I had in common was a lot of people in this industry need contracts, need lawyers, and that stuff. And John, when we did a deal, we did a handshake, and that deal was done for 10 years. Uh, it was, uh, yeah. when, he said, when John Penton says he's going to do something, it's done. It's over. You don't need a piece of paper. You don't need a lawyer. And I do the business the same way. You know, I like a handshake guy. And, I, and he was a handshake guy when I met him, and I knew that, you know. Now, now about some of those business dealings, I understand there was something said at one point about you being paid, but being paid oh. in, in a unique way. You care to make any comment on that? <laughs> well, he's even better than cash. John Penton pays in gold, okay? <laughs> Can't beat that. But he's... he's he tells me he sold part of his now, you know. But Only to make a profit and, and, uh, and buy an airplane and uh, invest in, that, <laughs> in other things. Wow. Um, I Mr. still have I still have coins that John gave me right now. Wow. Yeah. And and that was uh, 20 years ago or something like that. More than 23 but, years ago, yeah. I think. Like Mr. Fenton talks all the time about his family, about his extended family. Now, Bob, you appear to be. As, as he describes, a very important part of that extended family. It, well, it's an honor to me to even uh, ever even be, to get to meet him, much less be his good yeah. friend and a friend of his family, because I like all of his family, you know. And, but the, and, but uh, it, the feeling is mutual. I'm proud and honored to meet him and know him, too. So there you go. It's just great seeing All in the family. <laughs> great seeing the two of you together. You, you still see each other periodically? No. Then? Only at functions now like this. Yeah. But I'm going to I'm going to go out and see him sometime. I I got to his gate and the gate was locked and I never got past it. The there. guy drives to my gate and turns around because the gate wouldn't open. <laughs> uh, Bob, you're obviously into the aircraft these days. Now, uh, Mr. Brent, are you going to take a ride with no, him? Yeah, let him yeah, take yeah, you up yeah, in the yeah, aircraft? I don't I think just, he'd want to ride with me. Myers told me about him flying. He, he flew Myers under a bridge one time, and and that that. Fix me. I, I I don't need to. I, 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 he's brave, but he's not that brave. <laughs> he's brave, but he's not crazy. Wow. Now, Bob, you uh, you like uh, anything in particular? You have a biplane or a? Oh, oh I, he, I fly he, all he, sorts of airplanes. He's in commercial with it. He buys and sells airplanes now. And he's been at that for about ten years or better. Quite successfully, as I understand. Yeah, yeah. it's doing good. Doing he's doing well. well.
It just means so much to the sport, so much to the industry for you to still come out to these functions, participate and be such a visible member, such an active part. Uh, a lot of people just still see you as, as the great hero, as we do with Mr. Yeah. Penton. Yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I, I think I better buy him a, a, a membership in the in the Penton Owners Group, huh? He, he nice probably gesture. doesn't have one, but I didn't have enough money to buy a Penton, or I would have been on a Penton <laughs> when, and when I first started. I wanted one, but didn't have any cash. <laughs> Yeah. Well, thanks so much to, okay. to both of you for Very talking good. with us a little bit okay. today. It'll mean a great deal to the Fenton Owners Group. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Bob. Where do you go? 